and make us much better. The first thing I want to share with you is a story from a book called Kitab al-Tawabin, <coughs> narrated, narrated by Ibn Qudama. It's about Musa al-Islam. And it's about how Musa al-Islam, as we know, with Bani Israel, was one of the toughest, most rigid people that he could be around. And at this time, there was a huge drought, a huge drought. This drought didn't allow for any crops, any water. It was just terrible. There was no rain. So of course the people of Musa and Islam, being who they were, they're like, you know, ask your Lord for something. Help us out over here. So Musa and Islam made dua to Allah, as he usually does close to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned something. He mentioned that how amongst your flock of people, there's one person who is not only engaged in a sin, but they haven't done something which is a crime against themselves, which is impacting everyone at the same time. And that crime is not the sin, but the inability to seek forgiveness for that sin. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us prone to sin. It's always in our DNA. We are prone and inclined to sin. But what makes us special, what elevates us is our ability to seek forgiveness. So amongst the flock of Musa alayhi salam, his prized people, there was someone who committed the greatest of sins, which is not seeking Allah's forgiveness. So he told Musa that there's someone amongst you who hasn't sought forgiveness. And when he announced this, a few moments later, it started to rain. MashaAllah, the beautiful weather changed, everything improved for the people. People got so happy. All because this person had turned back to Allah. So the story continues where Musa asks Allah This is a bonus lesson for you all. Musa asks Allah that, who, who's this blessed person who helped bring the rain? They brought the rain. Well, what happened? Who is this person? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected, immediately showing how when he was sinning, I never exposed him. What makes you think I'm going to expose him now? What we need to understand was that his forgiveness, his repentance, his tawbah is what allowed the rain to come, the blessings to be released from the skies. The reason I'm mentioning this story is because think about our state right now. How many amongst us have not sought Allah's forgiveness? How many of us right now is the reason the blessings haven't opened up from the skies? And that's a metaphorical reference. The blessings of the skies can actually be rain, but it also could be just barakah, goodness. If you're asking yourselves, why is there so much fitna facade and just harms in the world? Why is this happening as cute? It's because amongst us, there's people who haven't truly, sincerely turned back to Allah. I'm not expecting you to be, to, to be perfect. I don't expect that, and that wouldn't be fair. But what I do expect is that if we want to change our state, if we want to improve our lives, if we want the barakah to be flowing on the entire ummah, we need to seek repentance and turn back to Allah. We learn from this story that your actions impact other people. So those dodgy business dealings that you do, don't think that you're just cheating someone, no, 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 no. Not only are you cheating yourself and them, but you're cheating the Ummah from actually receiving the full benefits that we deserve. The next time you're about to do something shady, something wrong, think about this for a second. Am I that person that would be in that flock at the time of Musa al-Islam who has not sought Allah's forgiveness? I want you to sincerely ask yourself this question, where am I? Where am I currently with my repentance towards Allah? Where am I currently with my level of respect and admiration for Allah? Are you someone who is doing your best so that barakah and blessings could be flowing in your own home? If your home is messed up, your children are messed up, ask yourself, have I not sought forgiveness yet? If not, turn back to Allah. If you're like, where is the rain, the blessings, the barakah in my house? Why are there so many fights? Why are my children not listening to me? Why is there all this friction between me and my children? Ask yourselves, amongst you, are you the person who has this forgiveness? You see, it's easy to look for others. It's easy to look for others. 
But the two tests of hypocrisy needs to be looked within themselves. There was a companion who came to the messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this companion was famous and they were known for being the companion who was the knower of all secrets. He had the secrets. So the messenger saw Sallallahu Alaihi when he was revealed the names of the hypocrites of Medina, he shared it with one person and that was this companion. So this companion knows and uh, he knew the names of the hypocrite, never revealed them, not once. So Umar bin Khattab comes to him. He tries to use his rank. You know, he's Umar bin Khattab, he's a big deal. He's Umar bin Khattab, Amir al Mu'mineen, soon to come. He asks him, who, who are these names that were revealed to you? Listen to this. Who are these names? Listen to you. Umar bin Khattab was not interested in the tea. He was interested in the gossip. Listen to why he asked. He asked the companion who was the secret holder, the vault, the safe of the names of the hypocrites that was revealed to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So listen. Umar bin Khattab asks him, who are these people? Who are these names? The companion said, I can't reveal that to you. I've promised the messenger, alayhi wa sallam, that I can't do that. Umar bin Khattab persisted and then he asked one question. He's like, okay. My only question to you is this. Is Omar's name on that list? Is Omar bin Khattab's name on that list of hypocrites? It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to look at others for your problems. But the real question you gotta ask yourself is, am I the reason? Am I the reason that the rain from the skies, the barakah, and the blessings has not poured on us, poured on the ummah? Are my secret sins when no one's watching? Is that what's causing this? Is my lack of forgiveness from those sins causing this? If so, turn back to Allah. Turn back to Allah and just watch how Allah takes care of you. Turn back to Allah and just watch how your family situation improves. Turn back to Allah and watch how your community, your society, the masjid, and step by step by step, gradually the entire ummah improves. Why? Because we all have been concerned with seeking forgiveness and being conscious of Allah as a child. The second thing I would like to mention to you for why the state of the ummah is the way it is. This is a powerful one of Allahi. This is something that can cause tons of fitna. Huge. I see it daily. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that if there comes to you a proposal of someone that you are satisfied with their quality, their good character, their deen, then marry your child to them. Marry them to them. Because if you don't listen, this is the most important part. If you don't, fitna, facade, just wrongfulness, evil will be widespread on you. If you're wondering why we are the way we are, it's because we've learned to take the opinions of others at a higher rate than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have learned to prioritize the people of what will they say if I marry someone who is of a darker complexion, my daughter too? What will they say if I marry someone who comes from a different lineage or tribe or heritage or last name? What will they say? What if I marry someone to someone who's not that, not that rich, not that good? You're so focused on what they will say that you've missed the hadith of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're so focused on what they will think about you that you've forgotten to wonder, hang on a second, what will Allah think about me? Will Allah not question me? You're so focused on what they will question you, but have you thought for a second, hang on, won't Allah question me? There's so many youth who message me with this concept that my parents are making marriage so difficult for me. This person is good. This person does this. They're a good person. At least I feel that is. But my parents won't even give them a chance. Why? Because they come from a different family. They come from a different background. They come from a different descent. They come from a different ethnicity. That is the reason they are rejecting the proposal. Pure ego and arrogance. And parents, I want to let you know something. Here's a secret. When you make the halal difficult, you make the haram accessible. When you make the halal something difficult for your children, you are giving them permission to do the haram because you made it easier.
here for them. When you make having a nikah difficult, you've made dating easier. When you have made the process of someone coming to ask for your child's hand difficult, you have made sliding into someone's DMs easier. That's the reality. So if you're wondering why the state of the Ummah is the way it is, ask yourselves, are you the cause of this? If you are in the condition that you have had a proposal come to you for your child, or you know a child that is struggling and you are their aunt, you are their uncle, can you at least advocate for them? Can you help them a little bit? Can you just be the, you know, the third party who just does the proper judgment that is a little better for them? Can you take that responsibility? I believe we can. Because if you marry your child to someone because of their, you know, their, their, their lineage and their wealth and their status, you might be marrying them for the wrong reasons. And your beautiful child is now with someone who is not at the same level as them. And instead of that person raising them to a higher standard of being any man, they start dragging them down. So your beautiful daughter who is going to be married to a mashallah pious, probably even a half in the Quran. You're like, no, no, no. I don't want a half as mashallah. I want someone who has a Range Rover instead. I want someone who can afford a house for you instead. That's who I want you to marry my daughter. And when that becomes your standard, your beautiful flower of a daughter goes to someone who instead who was going to read Quran with her at Fajr doing good things. Now they're dragging them down and it's all about the image. They want to take them off. Oh, why are you wearing this cloth in your head? It's embarrassing me. Take off the hijab. That's how it starts. So if you're wondering where 